Okay, so let's start by coming to down. Okay. So we're all lying down and you've positioned your bodies in a comfortable position. So it might be with your knees bent and your feet on the floor or your legs extended. And if you wish to have your arms over the head, that's fine, or down by your side or resting your hands on your torso, any of those positions is good. And if you're happy to close your eyes, you may close your eyes, but you're if you prefer. And then we can just take some slow, steady breaths here. So as we arrive on our mat Friday night, ready for yoga. We want to give ourselves time for you know, our whole being to arrive. Or, you know, those aspects of being that we kind of attribute to a sense of self, perhaps, which is the body, the breath, the heart, the mind. And what we want to feel is, of course, as always, these things are coming together, but it's it's a kind of entrainment. So entrainment is when um, and often it can be uh, the energy of moving objects that entrain to each other. So this is something that um, was discovered by a physicist who put pendulum clocks in a room together and set them all so they were um they weren't in sequence and then they fell into sequence with each other and this is because there's a little exchange of energy between those moving objects and then they get pulled into the same field and in many respects this is what we're doing here in yoga we're looking to kind of entrain all of these elements of being together so everything falls into harmony, like many pendulums swinging together. And what we can do to move into this kind of level of entrainment is to perhaps focus our attention on one particular part of the experience. So we highlight that experience and then everything gets kind of pulled into the field of that. So this is why we often bring our attention to the breath because the breath is the sort of perfect model that we have to entrain the rest of our experience into ease, into flow. And into a sort of level of trust that, you know, the breath, it just breathes. It does its own thing. It doesn't need us to do anything with it. Although we have the option to take control of the breath too. It's one of the few physiological functions that we have that is um, uh, an automatic function. And we can also control it. What we're looking for ultimately is to allow it to fall into its own flow. Sometimes we take control in order to gather the breath. So we might take some deep breaths to settle ourselves. And then we trust in the process of breathing that the breath is there and it's always breathed for us. And it will continue to do so whilst we have this body. So we can feel into the settling of the breath and then maybe we'll feel how the body gets invited into that settling with the breath.
Okay, now I'd like us to just feel into a little bit of movement and I want it to be fairly explorative. Maybe you'll lift your arms up and have a little stretch out. And it might be kind of like one of those kind of stretches that you do in the morning. Move the arms around, maybe let the legs move, just starting to reach into the body, to breathe into the body. That's it. And just play around with any movement that helps you to connect into the body. You know, and come back into this experience. So often we are being projected or our awareness is being projected outside of the body. So this is an opportunity to just reclaim awareness within the experience of this form. And it's not that we want to get attached to the experience of this form, but we can recognize that we can use the experience of form to move into something that is more formless. So within the Yoga Sutra Patanjali or within Sankhya uh, Yoga, this is described as the interplay between Purusha and Prakriti. So Purusha being a um, formless element of being, we could say that it's just a pure state of consciousness perhaps, and Prakriti being nature. So everything that is manifest, the form, our body, our thoughts, our feelings, emotions, these are all within the field of Prakriti. Okay, so we can use this field of Prakriti, of nature, to enter that more formless element of being. It's our route into that. Okay, let's take a little roll onto our side now and come up from our side. Well done. And let's take a little seat. Let's cross our legs into Sukhasana. Okay, so Sukhasana, we're familiar with. It's a nice, compact, cross-legged posture. We can raise up our seat if we need to. So if once we've adjusted our pelvis by drawing the buttock flesh out and back behind us, then we can sit on a block if we still feel a little slumped in the lower back or dull in the lower back. We can take support underneath the shins if we need to. And we're just going to rest our hands onto our knees or thighs so we can be nice and broad across the collarbones, nice and lightly lifted through the chest. And then just feel into the breath again. So again, the breath has this power to gather together these elements of experience that you know, we attribute to a sense of self. And it's not that they're not a sense of self, but, you know, we're not just that. So we don't get sort of overly caught up in what we might think of as the limited element of being. We want to feel that we can expand into something that is broader, wider, more inclusive. So this is why we call it yoga, to integrate. Our experience is inclusive of the internal experience and the external experience. So as we sit and... Just allow the body to lightly rise up, allow the legs to release down. Maybe there's a little movement that naturally comes in to support this light lift, a little swaying, a little rocking around the pelvis, some deep breaths. You just let yourself give to this. Okay, let's take a roll of the shoulders together and draw them back and 
forwards and back and breathe. So we'll just do that maybe three times, rolling through the shoulders and then let the shoulders drop so we can feel spacious around the neck. And then again, we'll take another roll of the shoulders, but we'll roll them alternately. So we'll bring one shoulder forwards as the other one draws back. So like we're just sort of drawing a little figure of eight almost with our shoulders. That's it. So more of a sort of spiraling action there through the shoulders rather than just a simple circling. Okay, we'll come to rest again and breathe. Okay. And then we're going to just take, cup our knees with our hands and then we're going to take a little movement into the back. So we're going to lean back. And we're kind of leaning into the upper back if we can. So there's a pulling back, so we round through the back, but we kind of lift up into the shoulders in a way, into the uh, thoracic spine area, into the upper rib cage, rather than dumping down into the lumbar. And then we roll forwards. And then again, it's through the thoracic spine, so through the rib cage area, that area lifts up. So the chest lifts up in front. So this is what we can feel that we're moving forwards and back through the thoracic spine. Obviously, the whole of the spine moves because it's all kind of one system. But we guide it from the movement in the upper part of the torso. And we breathe. Okay. And then we come to pause and settle and find the breath. And then we're going to change the cross of our legs when you're ready. So you might need to give them a little bit of movement, a little shake out, a little rub. And then just change the cross of the legs. Again, adjust your seat as you need to. And come to sit. We sit tall, but we do it in a way that feels light. It feels effortless. So it might take time for the body to creep up into this length. And then we find the breath. And again, we want to feel this broadness across the chest and collarbones, but also across the space between the shoulder blades. So don't overly push the body into this. So we grip between the shoulder blades. Let's feel relaxed at the back of the heart. Okay, and we're going to keep this lift up. And this time what we're going to do is we're going to let our arms lift up from our lap. And we're going to move around with the arms a little like maybe we moved around on the floor. So we're just going to reach out and just feel into any movement within this space through the arms. Having a stretch out, you might go for one of those kind of stretches that you may do in the morning but you might roll through the shoulders bending the elbows moving through the wrists moving through the fingers and just feeling into any movement it doesn't have to be symmetrical and then you can let the movement of the arms maybe pull the body into a little movement so we're waking the body up here we're playing to explore to feel and just trusting again in this process of exploration that if we give our attention to this, we kind of know how to move. We know how to move without any element of sort of self-consciousness because we're just feeling into something that feels so natural. And what happens when we start to feel into these 
natural intuitive movements is that sort of contracted sense of self just disappears. We feel a more expansive sense of being here. And that our experience in our body is not just determined by our biography that we carry around with us, but it's just a response to a series of interactions between different components such as the breath and the physical body, the energetic body, and the mind and the heart. And of course, everything that's fed into our experience from what we consider to be outside. So what we feel as being now is just the um, result of almost endless interactions. So we can't really contract it down to being one thing that we call me, myself, or I. It's just an experience within time and space, here and now. Okay, we'll come to settle when we're ready. And again, we'll just feel into what that is to settle now, to still the movement, to feel into any residual experience in the body, any arising experience in the body. And any passing experience. Okay, well done. We're going to release the cross of our legs and we are going to bring ourselves up. Obviously, give yourselves a bit of movement first of all, but we're going to bring ourselves up to standing and we're going to bring our trusty cork block or brick shaped block with us. So let's come on up. And let's move my mat back. We're going to go into a wide stride. We're going to pop our brick block on the floor in front of us and we're going to step our feet out nice and wide. And we can just feel into any movement here, maybe have a little shake out, a little wiggle out. And then we might pick up a little more movement. But first of all, once we've kind of released any kind of residual sensation from the previous posture. We can then attend to our feet. So we're going to align our feet down through the midline of the feet. So in that, we um, are lining up the center of the feet, like we're wearing roller blades or roller uh, ice skates. So we're pressing down through our blades and we're deepening that contact with the floor to rise up through the legs, to rise up through the midline of the body. And then again, we'll just feel in to any movement here. So we can bend one knee perhaps and take a little lean over and then the other, just playing with this movement and breathing into it. Okay. And then I want you to feel as you lean into your feet, if you are moving from side to side, I want you to feel the push back up. And each time you get that push back up through the feet, you feed, lift up through the legs, you feed, lift up through the midline of the body. And then we come to pause. We're gonna take a little fold of forwards. So let's turn from our hip joints Let's bring our hands down to our brick or block, whatever we're using. And if you find in the lowering down to your brick that you feel like you need to round your back, then you should bend your knees so you don't have to round your back. And then 
again, once we're here, we're going to play with a little bit more movement, maybe a little bend of the knees. And again, we can reach from side to side. We can breathe into that stretch that we create through the inner thigh area. That's it, into the groin area. And feel that movement all the way up through the body, coming up through the back. We might be moving our shoulders forwards one by one to play into the stretch through the side of the body. And we just keep breathing and giving to it. If you find that the pelvis has got more tilt naturally, without you just thinking about this now, you can just feel into it. Then, of course, you can lower down. You might bring your hands to the floor or fingertips to the floor. But we're turning from the pelvis. We're not turning from the spine. So, again, if we're lowering down, we might be playing with a little bit more movement. I don't mind if you do take this into a full forward fold, but also don't feel that you need to. There's nowhere to get to, there's nowhere to be other than to align ourselves with the current experience. And it's not to fixate on anything in particular. It's not to try and pin that experience down because when we align ourselves to our current experience, what we call current is constantly changing. Okay. We're going to bring ourselves back up to our break now. That's it. Pausing here, breathing. Okay. We are going to take a little walk now around towards our foot that in studio is towards the center of the room at home. You can turn to either end of your yoga mat so you can still see. So we'll bring our hands down. We'll take a little turn on our feet and we come into a lunge position. Now in our lunge position, what we want to do is to just check that we've got space across the width of our mat here, down through the center of our mat. And we'll play with a little movement so we can bend the front knee and we can push through that front foot and extend and kind of sink down, breathing into it. So we're just bringing that little stretching into the groin area, into the back of the thigh, into the hips. Okay. So we're going to bring that back knee down to the floor now. And this is where some of you might want a blanket underneath the knee. I recommend it because we are going to move on that knee. So it's worth having a little bit of support. But if you know you don't particularly need support in these positions, it's fine. You don't need to have it. Okay. We'll keep this length down through the midline of the mat. So you can see I can just pass my hand through the legs there without crashing into the leg, keeping a straight line. And then we're going to bring our hands up onto the top thigh, the front thigh that is, and we're going to lean forwards again so we can reach into that so we can push back. And what I want us to feel in this is that when we push back, we really push back through that foot rather than just sort of letting the body lift and we kind of gather the momentum of the whole body to lift. But let's feel that we push the body up from that foot. So it makes us work a little harder through the quadriceps there, through the front side. So feel into that and stay light in the torso as you feel into that feeding of the body back up. Okay. Well done. 
Okay. So we're going to come back up to an upright position. We're going to find the breath. This time, so we're keeping this space. This is important because it will help us to move the pelvis. You are going to turn your body. So it's kind of like an open uh, position. You, you might find when we move in this that this back foot wants to slide in a little. And you can let that happen if that wants to happen. So don't feel that you have to feel, keep this shin fixed to the ground parallel to your mat. We're going to open out the arms at shoulder height. And then we're going to take a little movement back through our lunging action, but we're going to do it from the side. So we lean in and then again, let's feel that push up from the foot. So we really push through that thigh. I know it's strong, <laughs> but it's good. It's good to work. So for many reasons, particularly if you've got any knee issues, it's really good to keep the quadriceps strong. That will support your knee. But obviously, resistance and strength work is really good for us as we all get a little bit older. Not that you all need that yet. You're all very youthful. So we can lean into it and we can breathe. Okay, we're probably starting to feel the quadricep burn now. So we'll turn back to the center and rest our hands on our thigh and just let the shoulders release and feel into the body. Let your body move. Maybe you want to let the arms have a swing or have a little roll through the shoulders, a little shimmy. That's it. Take some deep breaths. Feel into whatever you need to do here. We're going to take... The same action with the arms out wide, but this time you're going to turn away from me. So it's a bit more of a twist this time, both arms coming out at shoulder height if they can. And then again, let's take a little travel forward so we can lean into it and we can push through the foot and come back up. That's it. You breathe. <laughs> Yeah, we do start to feel it on that knee. So it's good to have that support if you need it. That's it. And just let the breath and body, again, they align with each other. This is really important. Okay, well done. Let's push into the foot, bring it back to the center. Hands on the thigh. Maybe again, we need a little shake out, a little shimmy out, a little wiggle out. And we're going to take a little lean forwards and bring our hands to the floor. So they're shoulder width apart. We're going to tuck the back toes, lift the knee, and then we're going to take a step back into a downward facing dog. So hands are shoulder width apart. Feet are hip width apart. And then we lift and we lengthen. So we're really lifting up the heels to lift up into the sitting bones. And then we get that tilt, that clean tilt of the pelvis. Then from there, we may let the heels descend, but they just descend from a process of release. So you can play in your body here. You can have a little bend of the knees, a little wiggle of the hips. A deeper breath or two. Okay. Well done. We can bring our feet in towards each other. This helps with balance. We're going to lift up the leg that's closest to me or closest to the screen. This is going to be the leg that's going to step forward. So we're going to take a big step forward with that leg. And... We can have our hands on the floor, either side of the foot. And again, we're going to lift the back knee. And as you lift that back knee, you're going to play with the lunge again. So we start in this position with the back leg lifted. And we move between bending the front knee and extending through the front knee. And just feeling that massaging up through the body. Mm. 
Okay, well done. Let's bring that back knee down. Let's lift the body up. Let's make sure we've got that space down through the midline of our mat. So in other words, we don't have the front leg directly in front of the back leg. We have a little bit of space there. And we find the breath. Because if we find the breath, we can find space. Because essentially, you know, the breath is like a, a constant pocket of space that we're moving in and out of our body. So let's feel into that and then that will influence the rest of our experience to align with that spaciousness of the breath. Okay, so we'll bend that front knee again so we can reach into this lunge and come back just forwards at the moment. So just coming back and forth. Obviously, how far you move into this is up to you. And if you find that there's a place where you want to explore and pause into it a little, feel free to remain there. You don't have to keep the movement going. You're always free to adapt and change. Okay, well done. So we'll bring ourselves back up. So again, we're gonna go into this open arm position. So we'll turn to the open side first. So you turn away from me, in other words. So to the opposite, keeping the same leg forwards, so we're not changing the leg. On which leg I've got forwards now. Okay, and then we're opening the body out. That's it. And we're moving into the extension there. So we bend and we reach back and we breathe. We're expanding between the arms. Um. Okay, well done. Let's bring it back up. Turn back to the front so your hands can be on your thigh. You can take a breath. Wait for the body to settle. Move the body if you need to move the body. Okay, and then we're going to take a turn. So you're turning towards the front leg side. So we open the arms out again. And then we move into the lunge, lifting and lowering and keep extending into the arms if you can. That's it. Breathing. See if you can really feel that push through that front foot. Okay, well done. Let's bring it back into the center, release the arms, let the shoulders soften a little. And again, feel into any movement that you might need here. A little roll of the shoulders, a little shake out, a little shimmy. And we'll take a little lean forward. So we'll bring our hands down so they're shoulder width apart, the fingers are spread. And we'll lift the back knee and we'll take a step back, positioning our feet and hands an equal distance from the midline of the mat, okay? And then we lift up and we extend and we breathe. And of course you can play with any movement that you might need here. That's it, enjoy the breath. Okay, let's come down. Let's bring our knees to the floor. Let's sit back on our heels, taking any support that we need between buttocks and heels or beneath the ankles with your blankets. And we'll just rest.
<coughs> so we'll just feel the spine sitting in its natural curvature. Or we'll feel the space that we have here for the belly. We'll feel the shoulders softening. The release through the elbows and the wrists and the fingers. And the steady flow of the breath. Okay, we're going to bring ourselves back up to standing and we're going to have our brick block with us. Again, you can pop your blanket to one side. We're going to face in towards the short end of our yoga mat. And we're going to take hold of our brick block. That's it face into the center of the room so we can face into the short end of the mat. Perfect. And we'll hold on to our brick block. We'll bring the brick block in front of us. So we've got a little um, energy there between the hands pressing into the block. Now we're going to feel into, we're going to sit into a sort of Utkatasana position, but we're going to Kind of trace the block in front of the body. We're actually going to roll the block down our thighs. So we're going to bend the knees, hinge from the ankles, hinge from the hips, tilt forwards. And we're going to draw the block down. And then we're going to just slide the block down the thighs. And then we're going to bring the block forwards. We're going to lift up. And we're going to pull that block back in to the chest. And we're going to do the same again. We're going to come down in front of the body. We're going to meet the thighs. Slide the block down the thighs. Bring the block up in front of us. Pull that block back in. And then one more time. Sliding the block down the thighs. Reaching forwards. Coming in. And then pushing through the feet to come all the way up. Releasing down, holding the brick. And taking a couple of slow deep breaths as you watch the body. So we can be aware that there's part of us that's able to witness the experiences that are going on in the body. to observe, to be conscious. And what we do with that is we let the experiences bring us into a state of awareness, a state of mindfulness, a state of clarity. And then we almost sort of receive feedback from the experience that we're watching. It feeds back into that part of us that is aware of the experience. And then we want to see if we can drop our attention to that. What is it that is being aware? Who is it that's being aware? Where is that coming from? And this is not an intellectual question. It's just, it's an invitation for us to see if we can feel back into that point that is awareness itself. No, 
it. It's a sort of objectless awareness. Okay, we're going to bring ourselves into a forward fold from here. We'll bring our brick block with us. So we'll tip from the hip joints. We're doing this with our feet in towards each other. So slightly stronger forward fold than when we do it with the feet hip width apart, but you can separate the feet if you need to for any anatomical reason. That's fine, of course. And we lengthen the chest forwards, we breathe. And we might play with a little movement of bending one knee and re-extending so we can just isolate the stretch through the back of one leg and then into the back of the other leg so we don't have to deal with it in both legs at the same time. But we can just give each leg a little bit of release, a little bit of relief whilst the other leg is stretching. And then we can feel into that interaction between you know, the strong engagement of the stretch and then the soft engagement of release. And allow our awareness to meet them both equally. Sometimes, you know, we meet that which is grosser, more easily, more obvious. But hopefully what we get from a yoga practice is what is called viveka in Sanskrit, which is discernment. And that enables us to meet that which is subtle as well, equally to that which is more overt. Okay, well done. Let's bend the knees now and we'll come down. We'll just sort of sit high heel, sit for a moment. We'll take the knees apart. We'll have the brick there in front of us so we can just rest our fingers on it and sit lightly through the torso here and breathe. Okay. Well done. We're going to bring ourselves down. So we're going to come to lay on our back, but we're going to need our yoga belt. So before you lay down, make sure you've got your belt with you. So have your belt and then come and lay on your back. Place your feet on the floor. We can just start by resting the hands on the torso and take a few deep breaths here and enjoy the breath in the body and the body breathing the breath. And we offer ourselves into it. So that is, we Allow ourselves to be within the fullness of the experience. It's easy for us to look for something that we might think of as being a little bit more entertaining or perhaps a little more useful. Sometimes we get lost in the mind because we're thinking about things that we need to do or things that we need to solve. But here, there is an opportunity to create clarity that will serve us when we're not on our yoga mat as well. But it only really comes by, you know, being clear in this moment, by feeling into this. Not being pulled into distraction. And of course, that doesn't mean to say you're not going to have any thoughts. They will come. 
But there is an element of us being able to choose to not just follow them along the sort of endless train, because it is endless. We rarely get to a point where we're thinking about something and it's like, okay, I'm done thinking now. We just find something else to think about. And although, of course, that's the normal, a normal human condition, what we are sort of injecting into our experience here is a little awareness of how we can get lost in that particular experience. So we find ourselves back in the body, in the breath. We orientate to this as our anchor point. Okay, so we're going to take our belt now and we're going to raise up the right leg. We're going to just pop the belt around the foot there. So you can just drape your belt, okay, for a moment. The leg is lifted. And we're going to raise our arms up. So we're raising the arms up next to the legs. So we're not immediately taking hold of our belt, but we're going to just kind of snuggle our shoulder blades into the floor. So we feel nice and broad across the upper back here. And then we're going to catch hold of the belt. And we've got a couple of options. and Maybe we'll take both of them. We're going to work into the sole of the foot to work into the connective tissue there, the plantar fascia, which will help release the back of the leg. And we can do that with a little uh, back and forth movement, like a little sort of towel drying action on your foot. So just sliding the be uh, belt from side to side, moving up and down the foot, but doing it with a little bit of pressure. So don't just sort of softly move the belt up and down, but actually apply some energy into that so you can feel the pressure of the belt against the foot. So this is one way that we often do, but also we can just apply the belt, hold it in any one place and again, apply a little pressure and then maybe we'll move it, adjust the belt and move it up and down the foot, just holding and pausing into a little bit of compression with the belt and then release. So compression is quite a useful tool that we have in yoga in that when we apply compression anywhere to the body, in that moment of compression, we obviously restrict blood flow, that's pretty obvious. And then when we release it, we the blood flow returns, but it increases to that area. So it can be really beneficial again for just increasing some blood flow and what we do in that is we increase our awareness, we increase sensation, we increase energy. Okay, now having done this, we can then choose to position our belt either around the ball of the foot or the heel. And then once we positioned the belt, so at the ball of the foot, it's going to be stronger on the back of the leg. So if it's too strong, go to the front of the heel. And then we're going to just take our arms out wider, still holding the belt, so sliding the belt through the hands or sliding the hands over the belt. So we come out into this wide position. We're not coming all the way down to the floor with the arms, but we are um, extending the arms out at this um, sort of diagonal position from the body. So it's like we make a big sort of diamond shape between our belt and our arms. Okay, that's it, great. Okay, now what we're going to do here is we're going to play with a push-pull between the foot and the arm. So we're going to circle the leg. So as we circle the leg and pull the leg away from us, the leg is kind of driving that action. And then as the leg comes in towards us, the arms drive that action by pulling. So I want you to feel into that interaction of the push and pull between the arms and the legs as you breathe. And we can feel the movement around the hip joint in this action. We can feel into the flow of the breath.
Okay. Let's change the direction of that movement. And again, feel into the push and the pull, the push of the foot, the pull of the arms. Okay. And then we'll bring it back into the center with the leg up. We'll release our belt and you might need to give your hands a little bit of movement, the fingers, the wrists, if it feels a bit uh, grippy. Sometimes we kind of almost get a little claw action going on with our hands when we grip our belt. So shake it out, wiggle it out, whatever you need to do. Then we're going to take hold of the belt again with both hands as we extend the other leg to the floor. Then we'll take hold of the belt with the same hand as the raised leg. So I think we're all raising our right leg. So, but if you're raising your left leg, obviously it's your left hand. So we hold the belt with one hand, we take the other arm, the opposite arm out to the side, and we're gonna be opening the leg out to its own side here. So when you're ready, draw the leg in towards you and then take the leg out wide. That's it, towards the floor. And breathe. So you, you it's the same leg. It's the same leg, yeah. You're still on the same leg. We, we haven't moved the belt at all. Okay, so the leg that you've just been working with. <laughs> it should have been your right leg, but... That's it, so yeah, still the same leg. But what, were you working with that leg? Louisa, or have you changed? Change. Okay, we'll just swap out, swap about. So don't worry. We'll we'll just remember on the other side to swap over. Okay, we're going to bring that leg back in now. Still the same leg, staying lifted up. Release your hands. Give them a shake out. And then we're going to swap over and hold the belt in the opposite hand. Take the other arm out to the side. And then this time it's a twist. So we can let that leg come all the way down perhaps, which will mean we'll roll all the way over onto the outer hip joint. But it might mean that that back shoulder lifts a lot. So we might need to adjust that back arm. Maybe we take that wide circle, bringing the arm down behind the back and then up in front of the body above the head a few times. That can help release through the chest. Or you can reposition that arm as you need to, taking the arm above your head, taking the arm down behind your back, or resting the arm across the ribs. Okay, let's roll it back into the center. Hold the belt. Let's bend up the leg that's on the floor, place that foot to the floor, and we'll release that raised leg, and then we'll extend both legs to the floor for a moment so we can just feel into whatever's there. The difference between the two legs, perhaps one feels lighter, one feels maybe more alive or... Um, Energized, achy, <laughs> maybe more achy. <laughs> we'll call that oh, energized. Yeah. We'll say it's energized, not achy. <laughs> <sighs> There's more sensation, perhaps. Okay, well done. Let's bend the knees, place the feet to the floor, realign yourselves again as you need to, so you can move the pelvis. And then we're gonna raise up the other leg. Okay, so left leg lifting. I think we all have this on the first side. So left leg lifted, put your belt over 
the leg. And again, we're going to just snuggle our shoulder blades into the floor so we can be nice and broad across the collarbones. Then we're going to take hold of our belt. And then we're going to play with the movement, either that back and forth motion, massaging the sole of the foot with pressure from the belt. And you can take this as slowly or as swiftly through the action as you wish. Don't go too fast though, we might get some sparks. <laughs> okay, and then we can maybe play with just applying pressure and release. Pressure and release. Mm. That's it. Wonderful. Now we position the belt either around the ball of the foot or the front of the heel. We're going to take our arms out wide again. So just sliding the hands down the belt. So you take them out so they're wide. You've got your arms, they're off the floor. Your shoulder blades are in contact with the floor. And then again, it's the push-pull action of circling the leg. And how far you circle, it can be relatively small circles that you can feel into, or it can be larger circles, obviously being aware of the space around you and neighbors. But you feel into it and you breathe into it. Okay, and then we take the, belt, the foot in the opposite direction. So we create those rotations in the other direction. And again, we're feeling into that shifting of the sort of prime um, mover, we could say, of this. Uh, whether it's the arms that are creating the action by pulling or the leg that's creating the action by pushing. And we can feel into, perhaps we can feel into that moment which we switch over between. What part of the body is leading the action? Okay, well done. Let's bring it back into the center. We'll release our hands from the belt again. So we've got uh, space to have a little shake out, a little wiggle out, a little rotation through the wrists, whatever it is that you need here. And then holding the belt with both hands, extend the other leg to the floor, the bent leg to the floor. Okay, if you need to swap over now, swap over. And then we'll take Hold of the belt in the same hand, same arm as the raised leg. So for most of us, it's our left hand holding the belt. Take the right arm out to the side at shoulder height. And then we're going to open the leg out. So you can draw the leg in a little closer towards you. You can kind of work your way around the hip joint. It helps us to maneuver the um, thigh bone, the femur within the hip joint as we do that. And then we breathe into that stretch. You can give yourselves as much length on your belt as you need. That's more likely to lower the foot to the floor, but that's not the aim. We can also do this by having a short belt and having the leg hovering too. So there's kind of two different approaches. You can find the approach that suits you, that allows you to feel engaged. Okay, let's bring it back in and we'll again release the belt. Maybe you need a little movement into that hand that was holding the belt. This 
particularly here in studio, these belts are quite thick, so they can be quite hard work to hold. We'll take the other arm out and we're coming into the twisting action this time. So the leg's going to cross over the other leg, coming down maybe to the floor. And again, you're free to give yourself more length on your belt as you need. And then if you find that it's tight in this back shoulder, keeping the arm low to the ground, you bring your arm down behind the back and then up in front of the body and up above the head, taking a wide circle and maybe you'll do that one, two, three times, whatever you need. And see if you can take a moment to Really drop in. Okay, let's bring ourselves back into the center. Take a breath. We'll bend up the leg that's on the floor. So we're nice and stable as we release that top leg down and then we can realign and we can take a few breaths here. Okay. I would like us to now roll onto our side so you can face towards this side of the room and bend up that bottom leg to a right angle. Take support if you need to. If you want some padding underneath the hip, you can pop a blanket there or a cushion. Those little flat cushions work. And then we have this open angle here. So the bottom knee is bent, the top leg is straight. The bottom shin is parallel to the thigh of the top leg. Okay. Let's take a turn towards the short side of the mat. So roll your torso to face towards the floor. Place your hands on the floor, press into the floor and just lift your hip up and place it back down to make a little subtle adjustment of where we're positioned. And then we'll feel into a little movement here, a little side to side sway to loosen up through the waist to encourage the twist through a little massaging action. And then we're gonna come down onto our forearms. So the elbows will be positioned beneath the shoulders. You may come down into this position where you bring your forearms to be parallel to each other, or you can fold your hands in towards each other. So they're sort of in a triangle shape. Your arms, I'm doing that for my shoulder. And, but you keep your elbows beneath your shoulders. Okay. And applying a little bit of pressure through the forearms, a little sort of downwards push and a pull in towards the torso will enable you to lengthen your chest forwards. Okay, now when we've done that, we're gonna lift up that top leg and we're gonna take it back behind us and just position the foot back down to the floor so your foot may come off your yoga mat. And you breathe. And then you're going to take your arm that's closest to me. So this is the same arm as your extended leg. It's going to walk forwards and then it's going to walk across in front of the other arm. Okay. And then we can feel that extension all the way up through that side of the body from the leg up to the arm as we breathe. Okay, well done. Let's bring that arm back in. Let's bring the top leg on top of the bottom leg. Let's walk our hands in towards us while down. And let's swap the legs around to the other side. So we can still face towards this side of the room. We just move 
the other end of our mat. Again, just check that you've got this uh, right angle at the knee here. So you're not tucking that foot back in. You're keeping the back of the knee nice and open. And then we're going to turn and we're going to lift. We're going to press, press our hands into the floor and just lift the hip and place it back down again and make that subtle adjustment. And then you can play with this little bit of movement from side to side here. A little side to side sway. And just feel as you massage out that area of the back of the waist. On the sides of the waist and even across the belly. And then again, we're going to lower ourselves down. So we'll come down to bring our forearms to the floor, either aligning with each other in a sort of sphinx-like position, or you can fold your hands in towards each other if you find that comfortable or if you need to. And then we'll lift up that top leg. We'll reach it back. Maybe it will extend off our yoga mat. Then we might lift and lengthen a few times. And then we'll take the arm that's closest to me. This is the same arm as your extended leg. I'm going to walk it forwards. And then we're going to cross it in front of the other arm. So we can feel the reach, the stretch all the way up through that side of the body. Okay, well done. Let's bring that arm back in. Let's feel the return of that top leg to the bottom leg. So it's like we gather ourselves back into our center. We walk the hands in and up and take a breath. And then we're going to come to lay down. We'll do a couple of movements that we often do before we come into Shavasana for our yoga nidra. But if you want your socks on or warmer clothing, you can get that all ready for you now. I'll um, bring some eye pillows around for anyone who wants an eye pillow and some bolsters for anyone who might want a bolster in Shavasana. You can get yourselves nice and ready at home too. Okay, so as always, we might hug our knees into our chest and have a little rock around on our back. We might bend the knees with the feet on the floor around about hip width apart and arms out to the side and let the knees drop from side to side like windscreen wipers. <clears throat> or any other movement you can feel into and just let your body move. If anyone knows that they're going to want a bolster, let me know. I will bring one to you. Yeah, okay. okay. Yeah. Okay. So intuitively feel into what the body needs here. Do we need to lengthen out through the back? Do we need to massage through the back? Do we need to move through the hips or, you know, maybe we need to move into the ankles and the wrists or have a little shake out. You can feel into any movement that just takes care of any last little bit of holding that might be in the body or restlessness that might, might be present in the body. So when we lay down, we feel that we can just rest. Okay. So whilst you're all preparing yourselves to lay in Shavasana now, I'm just going to grab the singing bowl.
So of course, if there is any more movement that you need to make, then make. If there's any adjustment that you need to make to your position, to your posture, then make it. So any, you know, have the most um, engaging Shavasana or Yoga Nidra practice by making sure that we're really comfortable in the body. And then when we found that place of comfort, we feel that we enter into this. So we can just observe that our senses are able to pick up any external object through the mode of sound and odor and maybe if we don't have an eye pillow might have some form of sight even just recognizing that there is light behind our closed eyes and contact So we're aware of this interaction between ourselves or that part of our being that is the receiver of the objective world through the senses. And what we do here is we follow those objects of information through the senses to that part of our being that receives them. So there's a sense that we start to descend into our own being here, into our own center. In this action, we may be aware of the breath. Moving in and out of the body with ease. That our relationship with the breath may be one of observing it as an object in itself. And then feeling into it from the subjective experience of it, immersing ourselves in it. So we dissolve that sense of it being an object that is separate from us. We call ourselves into an experience that is integrated, that is inclusive. We may repeat to ourselves Internally, I'm practicing yoga nidra. And we practice yoga nidra with a view to move towards the experience of yoga nidra. So there is again an entrainment that happens 
as the body, heart, mind and breath sink into the rhythm of each other. We're going to take our awareness around the body now. And as we take our awareness around the body, we feel into each location, noticing how perhaps our immediate experience of it will be an objective one, but we drop back into the subjective experience. The observer observed and process of observing merge into one unit. So follow my voice around your body And have a sense of merging with each location in turn. The soles of the feet. the toes, top of the feet, ankles, The shins and calves, the knees, the thighs, the pelvis, the belly, and the waist, and lower back. the chest, the side ribs, and the upper back. The shoulders, armpits,
upper arms. Elbows. Forearms. Wrists. Back of the hands. Arms of the hands. Fingers and thumbs. Neck and throat. The back of the head. The chin and jaw. The mouth. and cheeks and nostrils eyes temples ears forehead and the crown of the head. And then we'll return to the breath and we'll visualize our body lying here on the floor. And we'll feel into the body. And we'll feel into a little gentle movement in the body, a little very subtle movement of the toes and fingers as we breathe. And we'll feel as we bring in that little subtle movement that we reintegrate with the whole of the body. We feel into our limbs. We feel into our torso. We feel into our head. And then we may repeat to ourselves my yoga nidra practice is complete. And we return to the breath. Slowly bend the knees and place the feet 
to the floor. And then you may roll yourselves onto your side to face away from me or away from the screen. And pause there. And then you may roll onto your other side and pause there. And slowly, maybe with a little movement as you need, you can bring yourselves up from your side and come to sit in a comfortable seated posture and we'll close <coughs> our practice together. <coughs> so we'll bring our hands to the heart into Anjali Mudra and we'll bring our hands <coughs> just in front of the chest there and we'll close our eyes if you're comfortable to do so and we'll chant Om three times together. So taking a breath in to prepare. Oh. Oh. you all very much. Namaste Namuraha. Reverence to you all. Thank you. Thanks for joining me everyone. Lovely to see you all as always. Uh, thank you on Zoom and Zoomers you might want to know and rumours you might want to know. Uh, my Monday night class at the moment which is normally a course is for the next few weeks there's drop-in spaces so if you fancy a bit of yoga on a Monday night 7.45 to 9.15 it's yoga and meditation and for the next couple of weeks there's a Zoom class I'm trialing that Zoom again so you can join me if you want on Monday thanks everyone thank you, <laughs> thank you. bye good evening bye <laughs>